Hey guys, Miss Miller here. Today we are going to cover magnetic forces and the corner right hand rule. So for a warm up, just a little review from last class. I want to know for question one and question two if these wires are going to repel or attract each other and make sure to explain your answer. Pause the video, try this, and then push play again to check your answers. Okay, to check your answers, number one should be attract and number two should be repel. I used a similar method for both of these. I did the curl right hand rule, remembering that an X is into the page and a dot is out of the page. That curl right hand rule helped me determine the magnetic field that's created by the current. And then I looked at the um, kind of center where the magnetic fields were interacting. If they were opposite magnetic fields, like in number one, we have kind of the pink pointing down, the green pointing up, then they would attract. And if they were like magnetic fields in the same direction, such as in number two, where they're both pointing downwards, you would get repulsion. Okay, so let's take a look today. We are going to look at magnetic forces. And since we just talked about attraction and repulsion, we're actually kind of already talking about forces, but we're going to formalize that today. So you should remember how electric fields and electric forces are intertwined. We've already covered that. So if you need a quick review, head back to, I believe that was unit five. Now we're starting to understand magnetic fields from last class. And now today we are going to focus on magnetic forces. The variable for magnetic forces, well, we know that our variable for force is just capital F. Some people will denote this like F sub B, since B is magnetic field, that could remind you that it's magnetic force, in the same way that we could say F sub G for gravitational force. The unit for magnetic force and really any force is going to be Newtons or capital N. So we're going to examine both the magnitude and the direction of magnetic forces. We'll start with the magnitude. And this is the first case. Here we have a current carrying wire in a magnetic field. And as a result, you get a magnetic force. Again, this is not new. What we were looking at in the warm up and the screenshots from last class's lecture were attractive and repulsive forces. And it came from current carrying wires, creating a magnetic field and affecting the other current carrying wire. The equation to calculate the magnitude for this is F equals I L cross B. Let's talk about this. F is simply standing for the magnetic force, measured in Newtons, of course. I is the current measured in amps, just like before. L is going to be the length of the wire measured in meters. And B is the magnetic field, just like we learned in the last class. And that is measured in Teslas. Looking purely at units, um, this definition down here under fun fact kind of starts to make sense. The official definition of an ampere is that current which when flowing in two infinite parallel wires one meter apart produces a force between them of two times 10 to the negative seventh newtons per meter. So yes, we've been using ampere all along. Now we can actually understand the formal definition. We have how far they are apart. We have two infinite parallel wires. We have different forces. It's kind of cool. Looking at this, I think that perhaps I made a typo because force needs to come in Newtons. Okay, so F equals I L cross B. Notice that I'm saying cross and I'm not saying X. This is not an X in here. This is a cross. You may have heard about cross products in math class or perhaps not yet. The cross product is really just saying that everything needs to be perpendicular to each other. So let's think about which of these variables have direction to them. 
Well, force is a vector. It has direction. Current is a vector. It has direction. And of course, magnetic field has direction. So this cross product is saying only take the perpendicular pieces of force and current and magnetic field. So it's almost like we should come back to our statement and say a current carrying wire that's perpendicular to a magnetic field will experience a magnetic force. So that's what this cross product means. It's really just talking about a direction and we're gonna revisit that using a different right hand rule in just a moment. So I wanna zoom back out and talk about a different case where you can also experience magnetic force. This is case two down here. Case two is when a charge is moving in a magnetic field, then you will again experience a magnetic force. So notice that before we were saying a current in a magnetic field experiences a magnetic force. Now we're looking at just an individual charge moving in a magnetic field to experience a magnetic force. This is where our next equation comes in. F equals QV cross B. F again, standing for magnetic force measured in Newtons. Q standing for the charge measured in Coulombs. V standing for the velocity measured in meters per second and B being the magnetic field measured in Tesla. You again have this kind of funky cross product having to do with the perpendicularness of force, velocity, and magnetic field. Notice that charge is a scalar, it's just a number. It wouldn't have um, a vector sign and therefore we're not considering that in the cross product. So I really like to think of these two equations as stories. The first equation tells us that a current carrying wire of some length in a magnetic field experiences a magnetic force. Our next equation tells us a charge moving at some velocity in a magnetic field experiences a magnetic force. Okay, so we have two equations. It has this funky cross product in it. Let's talk more about the direction, and that's when that cross product's really gonna come in. So I mentioned before that the cross product is really a way of getting everything to be perpendicular to each other. What we're doing is, the fancy word is making everything orthogonal, meaning that everything is perpendicular in three dimensions. So for example, you could look at the corner of your room where kind of the floor meets the wall. You have one axis along one side of the floor, another along the other side of the floor, and a vertical axis, the corner of your wall coming up. So we're really trying to make everything orthogonal or perpendicular in three, in three dimensions. And that's where the corner right hand rule comes in. Notice that this is called a corner right hand rule. It should remind you of the corner of a room. Last class, we learned a curl or grip right hand rule, which again should remind you of what your hand's doing. Okay, so we have our two equations from before, IL cross B and QB cross B. And notice these kind of creepy hands drawn out. I want you to make this shape with your hand. You should notice that your thumb and your pointer finger make a 90 degree angle. Your pointer finger and your middle finger should make a 90 degree angle. And your thumb and your middle finger should also be 90 degrees. This is orthogonal. Now for this next part, I actually like to act, like label my fingers to get used to this at first. So you might want like an erasable marker. Your thumb is going to stand for current or velocity. I like to remember this by thinking about my thumb is like my hitchhiker finger. If I'm hitchhiking, I want to go places. I want to get a velocity or I want to flow like current. 
your pointer finger is always going to be magnetic field B. So I would write a B on my pointer finger. And then your middle finger is going to be F. Of course, we know that F and your middle finger kind of go together. So this means as you rotate your hand around, if let's say velocity was to the right and magnetic field was up, you automatically know the direction of force. Or let's say you knew the direction of force and magnetic field, you could find the current. So as long as you know two of these things, you can figure out the direction of the third. Let me write this down. So the first thing that you're thinking about is that your thumb, I'll use colors here. Your thumb is going to stand for I current or V velocity, depending which scenario we're in. Your pointer finger is always going to stand for magnetic field B. And your middle finger is going to stand for F, force. I have a couple tips while you're doing this, just to make sure that you're doing it correctly. Your thumb and your pointer finger should always be making an L shape. I remember this when I was a kid, we used to tease each other and say like loser with the L. So your pointer finger and your thumb should always be making an L shape. Your pointer and your middle finger should never be in a way where you're actually like flipping someone off. I know it sounds kind of silly. So like your pointer finger should be pointing up and your middle finger should be like kind of towards the palm side. My next tip is if it hurts, there's probably a better way. And what I mean is sometimes as we're gonna do problems, you're gonna like twist your wrist and try to force things to happen and if you get into like such a twist where it's not working, take a step back and there's usually a better way that sh this shouldn't be a painful exercise. Finally, and this really is important for me, if you write with your right hand, just be really careful. This is called the right hand rule for a reason. We'll talk about that in a minute. But if I'm taking a test and I'm writing answers with my right hand, I'm really tempted to do this rule with my left hand because it doesn't have a pencil in it. So just be really conscious. If you're a righty when it comes to handwriting, you're going to have to set your pencil down, do the right hand rule, pick your pencil up, and record it. Again, if we were in class, I would be showing you this. And while I'm talking to you in the video, I'm doing it myself behind the scenes, but you can't see me. So if this is a little confusing to you, I would check out this YouTube, it's Mr. Maisley. He has really great graphics on paper, but he also has videos of himself doing the right hand rule. So if you're a little bit confused about what this like physically looks like, I would check out that YouTube. Okay, let's do an example together. Here we have a charge, it has some velocity, and I got a little lazy with my labeling. The black stuff is going to be the magnetic field. Let's figure out the direction of the magnetic force. I'm going to first point my thumb to the right since velocity is to the right. Then I'm going to take my pointer finger, which represents the magnetic field, and I'm going to point that into the page. Finally, your middle finger representing force is going to show us the direction of the force. You should be seeing with your middle finger that the force is upwards. I'll draw an arrow here just showing that that force is upwards. Now, what does this actually mean for our charge? This upward force is actually going to be a net inward force, which should make you think of circular motion. 
I'm going to draw in the path that this um, charge actually takes a circle.